Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... The two men who were waiting in the corridor late at night were both in uniform. Roy Casper, fresh-faced and rugged, about 30 years of age, is an army lieutenant. Dan Fletcher, sitting alongside him, a young naval officer. You next. That's right. Well, how do you think you're going to stand up to it? Well, I'm pretty confident. I've passed everything so far. And you? Uh, I don't know. I reckon I'm all right. It was at that point that the door at the end of the passage opened. All right, take this one away. Through the door appeared two men carrying a third, who was clearly an RAF officer. He appeared to be in bad shape. The man in the white smock in the open doorway said, Next, please. Well, this is it. Wish me luck. I will, old man. Be seeing you. Roy Casper walked down the corridor, squared his shoulders, and entered the room. The door closed. Dan Fletcher looked at the door anxiously and strained his ears. What exactly went on behind that door? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel are told of a serious security leak and realize that this will be a case of interrogation. The telephone was the old-fashioned type, fixed against a wooden panel. The mouthpiece jutted out into the corridor. The receiver, with its long, twisted cord, hung in the clasp alongside. John Steed walked over to it, removed the receiver, and dialed a number. There was no call sound. Instead, the whole panel began to swing round. Steed entered the opening and replaced the receiver. He was in a large gallery overlooking an office filled with files, desks, and telephones. It was Mother's new headquarters. Mother? Mother? Over here, Steed, the cocktail cabinet. Oh, a bit early for mixing martinis, isn't it? I grew impatient waiting for you. I knew the moment I started to slice the uh, lemon, you would appear. You will join me? No, of course. I always like to start the day well. Uh, no olives. Ah, uh, good one. <laughs> for good health. I have an idea you'll need it. Thank you. And for the drink. Well, what's on your mind, Mother? Roy Casper, military intelligence. Casper... A uh, link man to some of our paid informers, isn't he? That's right. What about his habits? I think on the whole I'd say they were fairly clean. Uh, I did not ask you if he was house-trained. I mean his social habits, his hobbies, recreations, clubs he might belong to, places in the, he's in the habit of frequenting, people he might see. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, there's hardly a reply. Well, just putting two and two together, those sort of questions can mean only one thing. You're right. Casper is missing. Perhaps there's a little too much vermouth in this one. How long has he been missing? He hasn't reported in for the past 48 hours. Well, I presume someone has checked his apartment. Mrs. Peel is over there at the moment. Ah. Mother? Emma Peel. I'm at Jasper's apartment. I've been going over the place and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. Except... Except? Well, there doesn't seem to be a clean shirt anywhere in the place. A clean shirt? What's that got to do with it? I didn't send you on a... a a wild shirt chase? No, no, no. You misunderstand me. I can't find a toothbrush or a razor either. Huh? Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, quite. Uh, yeah. Uh, get, well, stay there. Um, I'll send the forensics mob along right away. Right. Bye. Bye. Yeah. No sign of a shirt, razor, or toothbrush. Looks as though he packed and left of his own accord, then. Exactly my own deduction. But it still doesn't tell us where Casper is, does it? Casper was sitting in a chair, his wrists bound tightly to the metal arms. A white light blazed into his eyes. He'd been there all night. The man in the white smock, whose name is Blackie, stood over him. 
May I have your name, rank, and number again, please? Roy Casper, Lieutenant 22413791. Good, thank you. You're attached to military intelligence, aren't you, sir? Sir? I asked if you were attached to military intelligence. My name is Roy Casper, Lieutenant 22413791. I shan't ask you again. <laughs> That will do, Sergeant Blackie. I'll take over from here. From out of the shadows stepped a handsome man of about 40. He wore a black polo neck jersey, black slacks, and high leather boots. He carried a riding crop, which he tapped lightly against his right leg. Colonel Mannering was a saturnine figure. So, you're feeling brave, Casper. Lieutenant Roy Casper, double two four one three seven nine one. Oh, I don't doubt your bravery. We have had many brave men in here, but they all talk eventually. You'll get nothing from me. Nothing. On the contrary. We shall get everything from you. Everything we wish to know. Colonel Mannering slipped the riding crop under Casper's chin and lifted his bowed head. Casper. Lieutenant Roy Casper. Look at me. Look at me! Sleep. Please. Let me sleep. Sleep? Of course, we'll let you sleep. A warm bed, soft pillows, eh? Soft, so soft, soft pillows. Sleep. Sleep. But not yet. <coughs> Lieutenant Roy Casper, two, two, four. We know you run a string of informers, Casper, men who pay for his. Scraps of information. The names of those men are known to only a select few. You will tell us the names of those men. You will tell me now. Understand? We know that one of these men is a keen archer. Now, we want his name and what he looks like and where he practices his archery. You will tell us now. Right on target, Wilson. Another bull. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll collect my arrows, then you show me how the shoot really should be conducted. Of course. It was you who challenged me, you know. Well, of course. Once I was told that James Wilson was the best archer in this district, I had to find out just how good. Well, I hope you're impressed. Extremely impressed. But it doesn't mean I can't win, of course. Of course not. I use a rather deadly arrow, actually. It flies like this. Dan Fletcher, the young naval officer, had followed Roy Casper into the room at the end of the corridor. For him, this was also the testing time. I, I won't tell you anything. I, I, I won't. Listen to me, Daniel Fletcher. You had a friend. His name was Roy Casper. He passed through this room ahead of you, didn't he? D d don't know anyone called Casper. Oh, yes, you do. Or at least you thought you knew him. You thought that he would succeed, maintain his identity, and not give anything away. But he did. He told us everything we wanted to know. And the man he identified is now ours. You will be equally cooperative. No. No, I won't. Yes. Yes. Yes, you will. Colonel Mannering began beating a tattoo on his leather boot with the riding crop as he repeated over and over and over again. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. as I thought. This wine doesn't travel at all well. Unless we hear definite news soon, we'll both be in an advanced state of alcoholism. And nonetheless, Steed poured himself another glass of chilled wine. This is the trouble with being the king pin, Steed. Too much waiting about for other people to mess things up. You mean you'd rather be out there messing it up yourself? Mm -hmm. Mother. Hello? Yes, yes. 
When? Right. Keep me informed. Casper talked. What? He blabbed, squealed, spilt the beans, sold out. I, I can't believe it. Well, it's true. Either that or he's been made to talk. Well, I can't believe that either. Well, confound your belief, Steed. One of Casper's undercover informers has just been uncovered and killed. Wilson. Hmm. Who else? Huh? What do you mean, who else? Well, who else could Casper have betrayed? He only had one other undercover agent. Who? That's most secret, utterly restricted information. Was. It isn't now if Casper's talking. Uh, yes, you're right, of course. Well, come on, Mother, tell me his name. Uh, it's Izzy Pound. Clever agent. Uses a fair ground as his cover, Battersea Park. His name is Izzy Pound and his incredible marching sound. A one-man band. I've often thought I have a great deal in common with that man. In Battersea Park, that rather dreary winter morning, there was a rehearsal in progress. A placard read, Izzy Pound and his incredible marching sound. Now in rehearsal. No visitors. Keep out. Izzy Pound was trying out his instruments. They were strapped all over his person. Across the other side of the fairground, next to the rifle range, a man known as Sergeant Blackie paused and placed a rifle to his shoulder. Is he? Is he pound? Is he? I want to talk to you. Stop! Steve's Izzy. voice was drowned in the cacophony of sound. Stop! So, almost with a rifle shot, Izzy Pound stopped his tuning up and collapsed to the ground. <laughs> The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.